If you're going to do one thing in real estate, you need to do this. You need to increase your NOI your net operating income. Everything in, in real estate, in commercial real estate, is based on increasing your NOI. That's how property values in this industry are valued. Unlike the residential market, where your house, your home values are based on comp properties, three bedroom, two baths, separate garage, are all similarly priced in the same area. That's not the way it works in commercial. Commercial property values are based on your net operating income. And what is that? Essentially, it's your income sources, your rents, any other income that you might have, minus your expenses equal your net operating income. Now from the NOI, you still have your debt service, the mortgage from the bank, and then you also have any capital expenditures. That, and you take those, and that's your cash flow. What we're talking about is value, increasing the value of your property. That's based on the net operating income. And that's what you see behind me. What really is this? this? These are value plays that I've collected over the years for the past two years. You're looking at two years worth of effort right here where I would take uh, other property packages, uh, the offering memorandum from the broker, the rent rolls, the T12s. Uh, bear with me, I know this is a little technical right now, but uh, the O&M or the offering package, uh, it talks about the property, pretty pictures, what's demographics, why should we buy the property? The rent roll is really the list of people who live there and what are their rents and any other income sources. Then we have the T12s or the trailing 12s, or essentially those are the financials of the property for the past 12 months broken out by month, where we can see if there's any spikes and we can ask questions. It's basically telling us the story of the property. Now, during when I look at those packages around the country, every now and then I'll see a little gold nugget of a value play that they're implementing at that property. Now, the big three, uh, they're charging for, they're pushing rents, or they're charging for parking, or they're charging for pets. Those are the big three. Virtually every operator does those three, but there are dozens and dozens and dozens of other strategies that you can employ in your property that can increase the value of uh, your net operating income. We're gonna look at a few of those right now. In fact, as we were collecting this information, a few interesting tracks emerged. Let's look at it. Okay, once you identify the strategies in at a property, we've discovered that there are certain parts. We can break down our value plays into separate parts. First is increasing revenues. That's our income. Sources that actually bring money into the property, new initiatives. Of course, uh, raising rents and charging for pets and parking, but there's other aspects that we'll look at. There's also expense reductions or savings. If we're not paying money out that means we're keeping more money in, which means our NOI goes up. For example, something not as glamorous, but challenging your taxes, challenging your insurance, uh, service contracts. It's not really glamorous, but when you look to say, I just saved $70,000 on my taxes or insurance, uh, that equates, using a 10 cap as, as a measure, that equates to a $700,000 in, back to your property. Are you kidding? You do enough of these 700,000 here, 200,000 there, 50,000 there. Pretty soon it adds up. In fact, when you hear about someone who, and this is important, so hang, hang in there with me. When you hear about somebody buying a property for $800,000 and then they hold on to it two years later, they sell it for 2.2 million or somebody that buys for 5 million and sells for eight. Or somebody buys for 12 and sells for 18 million. This is what they're doing. This is not magic. You just have to identify a strategy and implement on it. That's it. Now, of course, there are execution models that we look at and, and I look at every property I look at, I run through this, this metric right here. You have, I'm sure you have your own process systems you use, but this is what I use virtually for every property. Now, granted some markets, some properties, you can't implement every item, but I've got dozens and dozens of strategies I look at for every property. My primary goal is to drive up our, our net operating income. And these are the strategies that I'm, I'm planning to use and I'm willing to share with you. Hope you like it. There's another category that came through as I'm looking at all these value plays. I'm calling it softer increases because it was harder to quantify. Is it an income generator? Is it a cost savings uh, generator? There's re the revenue pipeline. That's what we want to do. We want a lot of these little plays to build up. So at the end of the day, when we go to sell, 
we have uh, an increase in our NOI enough that it's significant. So the softer increases, what are they? Well, first buying rate. Are you getting great financing? The purchase price is one component, but very often, you know, if like me, you're placing offers on a lot of properties and you're coming in number two, number three, and there's nine or 10 or 15 bidders. Okay, all of them think that they're underwriting really hard, but there's still somebody who pays a little bit more. And how can they possibly make money for their investors if they're paying a little bit more? Well, primarily, it's because of the financing that they're getting. They're getting great interest rate. They're getting great terms. They're getting a, a good amortization. So making sure under other software increases, getting the great terms. Also, another primary driver in other increases is your property manager. Selecting the right property manager will make or break your property. So making sure that they're a strong property manager to implement every one of these value plays. Are they able to push rents? Are they able, here's a big one. Are they able to generate a community within your residence? One of the main drivers on why your residents are leaving is they don't feel listened to. Okay, vacancies uh, account for one of the highest costs of your property, uh, vacancies and utilities. So we want to make sure our vacancies remain low. How do we do that? We keep the residents longer. Part of that is making sure the property manager talks with the, the residents, uh, responds to maintenance requests, and they have to be a strong property manager. So that's why the property manager is really critical. And of course, what's our exit strategy? We know what our exit strategy is going in. Before we buy the property, we know how long we're going to hold it, what value plays we're going to implement, what our expectations on returns back to our investors are. And having a proper exit strategy allows us to work towards a goal and, and actually sell at the end. So that's important. Now, over the course of the next several dozen sessions, we're going to be diving deep into each of these categories and value plays and really look at those. What are they? How do you implement them? And what are the financial paybacks? We've done financial models on, if you do this, this is what you can likely expect in a certain market. So I hope you can see uh, the value plays and increasing your net operating income is important. Make sure you like and subscribe. And also let me know your feedback. What are some of the value plays that, that you've come across? What are your favorite value plays? Let me know, I'd love to talk to you about it. I'm Phil Russo, stay tuned and stay informed.